one of the more common scenarios you'll run into is that you come across a GitHub repo of machine learning work and it looks really cool uh, and you want to figure out how to test it, make sure it works the way you expect it to, or just sort of understand how it works. Um, so in this video, I'm just going to walk you through how I approach like finding a GitHub repo and then converting it to a CoLab notebook. Um, so here happens to be a notebook called WCT2. Um, it is one I came across really recently that does a uh, photorealistic style transfer. So if you're unfamiliar with what that means, it means like photo to photo. So basically it can keep, uh, whereas in other style transfers, you're trying to transfer textures and, um, you know, more of the, the, the painterly or the visual aesthetic of the image. In photo to photo, you really more or less want color, maybe some style you know if there's stuff like um bokeh or other things like that might get transferred in but realistically what you want is is color and lighting um so this is an example of one of their videos and you'll see down here um they've got some examples of you know other uh models that do similar things and then theirs and like this looks pretty good right like this is exactly what i want to see some of the some of the lighting some of the reflections appearing um but not a lot of the texture and other things from these images so um this is actually based, I believe, on an NVIDIA project, and this company came and took it to like the next level. Um, Clova AI is one that I've seen a couple projects from, and they all tend to be fairly good. So I sort of have uh, a little bit of trust in this in this model to work the way I expect it to. Um, but you know, it's just a GitHub repo. Like there's there's not a whole lot that I can see to be sure that it's working the way I expect it to. So. Uh, let me just walk you through how, how I do this. So first off, I've sort of read through this page a little bit. Um, I sort of understand that there are, uh, you know, the most common thing you're always going to do is clone over the GitHub repo. Um, there are some cases where some of these are built into like a pip library, um, but that's pretty rare. So I'd say like generally the first thing you do is you clone over the library, um, check for whatever you need to install, and then sort of start running the tasks. and. You'll hit a bunch of error messages and then you keep going. So I actually haven't done this one yet. So let's just do it live and see how it goes. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a new notebook. Um, I'm gonna name it WCT2. Um, and then the very first thing you pretty much always wanna do is change your runtime type to GPU. Um, if you don't need a GPU, you can just download it and run it off your CPU, but almost all of these require uh, GPU. I'll just set the high RAM just to like see how it goes. Um, generally isn't an issue for me with most of my libraries, but this, we'll just see how it goes. All right, so uh, first thing we'll do is we'll take over the library from Git. Um, so remember that when you run git clone, you need to add the um, exclamation point in front of it that says run this as a bash command. Uh, the next thing you wanna do is you're gonna wanna move into that folder. Um, I always use the percent CD, uh, exclamation point CDU also works. Um, I believe this one is, I don't actually really know the difference. I just know that like in general, I see other people using uh, percentage CD. So I just use that one as well. Um, all right, so let's connect. And let's run this. So I'll try to add some notes while I'm here. not a text cell, that is a code cell, so let's see text, add that there. All right, so uh, now if I look over here, yep, I've got this. Let's just go back over here and just sort of see what we have. So there are uh, a pip install of requirements. Now, the nice thing about Colab is a lot of this stuff already comes pre-installed. So usually you might have to install PyTorch, TorchVision, um, NumPy, any number of things. Colab comes with so much of that already installed that I find that quite honestly, I often, am, it's pretty rare that I need to install stuff via pip. Um, one thing to do is let's just take a look at what's in the requirements. So you'll often see that a lot of people will make like a requirements.txt file and then inside of there are a bunch of um, libraries and then what version they're pinned to. Um, I also try, I, I basically what I do is I start without pinning. Um, pinning means looking for the exact version of what you need. Um, I try to avoid pinning stuff immediately just because this can get pretty messy, especially with Torch. It'll like make you restart your machine, a bunch of other things. So generally, like, so Torch, Torch Vision, TQDM, NumPy, and Pillow, all of these things come pre-installed on Colab. 
So I'm actually just going to skip this step. Um, if I saw one that I wasn't familiar with, I might try and run it and sort of see what happens. Um, and that would just be as simple as, you know, in here you just say uh, exclamation point pip install and then whatever the library is. So, you know, um, more often than not, like uh, if you run this, so actually let's just do this. Um, this is actually a good thing to show you. So if I do pip num install numpy and I run this command, you'll see requirement already satisfied. That means numpy is already installed here. So first off, it didn't do anything. So it's not the worst thing in the world to just run this and see what happens. But I like to keep my notebooks a little bit cleaner and make sure I'm only really like messing with stuff I need to. Um, so in this case, I actually don't need to run this. This is already installed. So, um, you know, we could actually like, I mean, we might as well just go ahead and do this and see what happens. Um, but since I'm already in that folder, let's just run this and see what happens. Um, See, so in this case, it's gonna download all this stuff. So my guess is that at some point it's gonna download this, which can take a while. Um, while this is downloading, let's just keep looking over here and see what we need to do. So git clone the repo, um, pre-trained models. So this is, I'm gonna work off pre-trained models for now, um, are already in this folder. So let's just make sure that's true. Model checkpoints, and yep, I see some files in here. So uh, the next step it looks like is preparing the image data set. So image, images can be found in the DPST repo. This is another thing you'll find fairly often that people are sort of like linking to other repos and pull all the data from this repo. And then it's, you know, everyone's trying to do this a little bit as easily as possible um, on their end, because uh, this is research code, like they're not really putting this in production. Um, so a lot of times you'll see people like link to other sources. Um, so what was I looking for over here? Uh, you can find the entire content and style images in the following links. DPST images input folder has the content images and style folder has the style images. Okay, so let's open this and let's just see what's here. Okay, so in examples, so what I think we want to do then is we're just going to clone over this repo as well. So I'm going to have a little bit of an issue because this. So actually, let's just stop this. Um, I'm going to run this and see if I don't need to do it. Um, so let's come get clone. Um, so let's actually first um, move outside of this. So we're right, we're right now inside of WCT2. So we're going to move outside of it. Um, so it's just going to move us to the slash content folder, and then we're going to clone this down again. Let's run this. And so because this is a style transfer model, we want a content image and a style image. Um, and you need both of those in order to make a style transfer work. So we're not going to do a new data set because this is just us testing them to see how this thing works, make sure it does what you expect it to, make sure it doesn't require like 10 GPUs, those sort of things. Um, so put the content and style images with their segment label pairs, if available, into the example folder. So interesting, it sounds like you need some segments um, for this example. I wonder if segments help it like know, you know, when not to like texturize an image or, you know, how to keep sort of the, the semantic shapes of these things separate. So we'll take a look at that as we go through this. Um, currently there are several example images that you can execute the code as you clone this repo. So let's see in examples. Content, content, segment, style, style, segment. So if I look at these, let's get this image. So this is a image of a house. And if I look at the segments, yeah. So um, perhaps what this model was trained on was trained on both images and segments. So it does look for segments. Um, let's see. So what's interesting is this is a non-building. And this segment is just a mask. That's also a mask in 34. Okay, interesting. So I'm, I haven't, I actually haven't, I honestly haven't read the paper for this yet. So I don't actually know how uh, some of this stuff was trained, um, but that's okay. This sort of gives, gives me a sense of just how it works, which right it is like a segment map. Like I don't even know that doesn't even have a map on it. Um, 
So, and let's see, content segments. So in, another building, and a segment map. So you can sort of see, let's actually pull these up together. So you can see that the way that this is mapped is the building itself is red. Right? And the foreground um, or ground layer is green. I guess black is sort of like border, background, whatever you want to call it. And then this like sort of puke mustard color is the sky. So uh, clearly what they're doing is they're like doing some semantic mapping so that uh, the model can learn, you know, don't transfer this style to here. Don't transfer this style to here. Um, so this is probably one way that they really improved this model. Um, okay, so let's come back over here and let's look at finally test the model. So I think we're ready to do this. So um, I don't know what option, I don't know what cat5 is for unpool. Let's take a look over here. That argument was option unpool. Two versions of our model, there's sum and cat5. Okay, I'm clearly gonna have to read this paper at some point to understand what the difference is between those two. Um, A, dash A is transfer all. Um, stylize and save for every composition. So that's probably gonna run through everything in my folders. Um, dash content is, yep, that's looking for a folder. Dash style is looking for a style folder. Content segments, so we are telling it, hey, look at the segments that are mapped in these folders. So there's a content segment, there's the style segment, and then we're telling it where to go for the outputs. And then verbose, so verbose is just gonna like print out a bunch of stuff. And then image size is probably determining like use the output size. I don't know. It's often hard to tell what size these things are in Colab. So it's a little bit larger, so it's going to scale our images down. Okay, so we've already got all this set up. So what's actually really interesting is I really didn't need to clone over this other file. Um, I wonder if, however, there are in here examples. So there's an input. So there are more examples here as well. So segmentation and style. Yeah, so there's a style folder and there's an input. So why don't we do this? We'll run this first, just make sure this thing works and we're not um, having any dependency issues, and then we'll try it with this next version. And this is because I am not in the correct folder. And it looks like this is Okay, so it's doing, you know, this is similar to a lot of style, this is similar to like normal style transfer where it sort of iterates or, you know, does a bunch of cycles on each image. So um, let's come back over here while that runs and just sort of take a look at our arguments. So, you know, this is a, a fairly well documented repo. This is like one of the nicer ones I've seen. Um, it tells you exactly what all of these arguments are. Um, I don't think we used alpha blending ratio. So this is interesting. So you could actually blend um, if you want just a little bit of color from your style image, you don't have to um, completely transfer over. So this might be interesting to look at. Um, so it looks like there's some options around what uh, what layer or like where it's transferring from. So it looks like you can transfer it in coder, transfer it decoder, transfer it skip. So these are different like layers or different types of modules in order to make this work. Um, so I would should probably read this paper up here um, and take a look at some of these results before I get too much further in. But I can already sort of get a sense of how this works. Um, Component-wise stylization. So if I use option unpool sum, 
Okay, yeah, I, for this part, I definitely should read the paper in order to understand this. Low frequency only stylization. So maybe what this does is it just looks at hours, hours. Hmm, I'm not sure what the frequency is. I mean, I can tell the difference here, right? Which is that, um, you know, you get a little bit of a difference in sort of the, the paneling here. Um, yeah, so I'm interested. Results, cat five. Okay, well, um, so far we're, looks like we're doing pretty good. So let's just see how we did here. So all these images were produced. Let's see what, we made an outputs folder. Um, oh, interesting. So this is going to actually show every different network that we had the option of. So this is kind of nice because it shows you, you know, okay, so this you can already see the color of this person's shirt. Like that was the first thing I noticed to change between these two. Um, I noticed that with this, you sort of get this halo effect here. And maybe that's like poor segmentation or something else. You're also seeing a little bit of a highlight here, which, okay, that's in, that's in all these images. So, I mean, it's sort of interesting here because you can kind of see, also this feels like it's a little bit blurrier. So maybe in this case, the decoder image is, is better. So like I can sort of see why you're already gonna run with this. Um, there's also a decoder skip. It looks like there's a ton of options here. So, you know, as I'm playing with this, I might want to explore like what are the best uh, settings to use. My guess is probably going to differ based on every image, which is why they gave you those options. Um, so lots of really interesting stuff to play with here. Um, now I can sort of understand that maybe what I want to do is start running like a loop, um, you know, just to get, you can use the dash A, but maybe I want to run um, I don't know, a, a, a Python loop to, to manage different versions. And as I say that, that sounds kind of silly, but it's an option. Um, so let's take this and let's update this, these lines of code just to match sort of what I will want to go with in the future. So what's nice about this is it doesn't need to be in a specific folder. All you need to do is give it a path. So this is a path um, to the folder you're looking for. Um, so we're now, if we look at this other folder, which is where there were a bunch of other examples, um, and we want to look at content so let's come here so this is input so let's just hit command copy path and let's just paste in that path uh, so this is a difference if you're not familiar with um, Python or like just bash commands this is a absolute path so if you see like there's no dot in front of here this is saying you know from the beginning of this uh, server or like the, the paths within the server um, start from the very beginning and then go to this direction. Um, this is a, a relative path, which means from the folder I'm in, um, then find examples or style. If there were two dots here, this would mean go back one folder from where I currently am and then go, then follow the path from there. So we're gonna grab the style path and paste our style path in. And then our content segments and our style segments are actually in the same folder, which I'm not sure if that's going to cause an issue, but let's sort of see. So let's just paste in both paths. I mean, this is literally what I do most of my day is I just try stuff and see if it breaks. And then if it does break, then I learn why. Um, the other thing I'm noticing is I wonder if we want to add this slash at the end of all these. So they did in their examples. So just for my own safety, I'm just going to do that too. Okay, um, so let's change the output path as well. Let's just do dot slash outputs two. That way I have a million files in here. And let's set the image size to be 256. It'll be smaller, but it'll also run faster. So let's run this and see. did not do anything. Okay, run this again. Interesting, I wonder why that is. Um, my guess is that it might have to do with the segmentation folders. So what I'm gonna do 
is let's just remove the segmentation folders and see what happens with that. So I'm not sure if those are required, to be honest. So let's just remove this. Okay, well, I did a long diversion that I ended up cutting out this video. Um, it turns out that for whatever reason, um, I've got to play with these uh, folder paths a little bit more because for whatever reason, it's not working, um, moving new fo new images in here. So I'll have to play with that a little bit more. Um, but rather than making this about a debugging video, um, I hope this just showed, sort of shows you like the basic process of um, moving a GitHub repo into Colab. Um, so again, remember that the important part is like clone the repo in, um, install any pip dependencies you need. In this case, we didn't need any. Um, and then try to see if there's a really basic uh, test command to run. Once you've got that, like then you sort of can start to build from there. Um, so maybe in some other videos, I'll cover like building off of this or doing other techniques. Um, but uh, you know, this this worked about half. This worked about as well as many of the collab notebooks I do um, do. Uh, it is always a challenge to sort of get past this first step. So um, that's part of why we're all here. So if you have questions um, or trying to do this yourself and get stuck somewhere, uh, drop a note in our Slack channel or ask a question on YouTube. Um, thanks so much.